So today I'm talking about significant the bird shell, uh, something I call the pre-year Cambrian longer shell. Now we get it out rid of it. What are longer shells? Um, talk about the location history and geology of bird shell, yeah, as well as preservation. Um, going through the bird shell fossils or bird shell farm. And um, we are privileged to have a small collection of bird shell fossils here in the back in that cabinet. It's normally locked up tight under key. Um, we're gonna have it unlocked at times today, like during the break, maybe during lunch, depending on you, although you're on the fruit alone. And so you guys can actually look at them over the today as well, outside of the talker. And why is the shell this would be so important? So longer shell is as you probably looked at a German word. And this see refers to a site that um, has a lot of integrated ground together. And these days it's sort of been co-opted by paleontology um, to refer to sites of session preservation. Anywhere you get a whole bunch of really nice stuff. Bird shale birds is one of the most famous large shotguns in the world, large shot in the world, um, with a huge array of animals that they were found. Uh, which is very unique, not only anywhere else, and led to a lot of questions about history of life. So basically, when you're fossilizing animals, um, some of that's how you guess we have a rapid burial, which provides a physical and chemical barrier to protect the fossils from decay and other processes that might store the areas of the fossil. Um, conditions without oxygen as well help prevent the resistance of their animals to get in there, even if fossils before they can be preserved in a rock. Uh, no currents to be worked and physical protection for a fossil. Um, little, little, little or no alteration after it's buried, and uh, something you learn when you go on hunt is uh, how even British Shell fossil site block out quarry is actually a little protected zone. If you go 50 feet to the right, the fossils are gone because there's an alteration that north has destroyed most of the fossils in there. Um, and without even having animals themselves having a hard base of their body, uh, they preserve more easily. And of course, in the best large shot, uh, have animals with soft parts preserved. And when you have a large shot, typically they have several of these features. Um, so you can bet. So it's the term for things where you get really good preservation, or it refers to things where you get just tons and tons of fossils, such as Vandor Vigil Park in Alberta, where they're literally places you walk along the ground just you walk on one dead sky. Preservation is not fantastic, but for so many of them, this is also considered a large some examples of these are actually very old famous Jurassic site in Germany, uh, with tremendously well preserved fossils of varieties of data, um, or Doji Axe Cemetery. But uh, here's a Russian crab that walked under a while and died. This is also the uh, world famous site of Classic Doctors, um, very well known fossil, as well as um, there's a lot of other sites in Germany as well that have fantastic preservation. Um, there's one site different age where the key source reserved with actually has the carbon outline body, so it's not just a skeleton being nice, it's just a soft art experience. Um, these things are better, more fun by sites, but here's a feature such as this. You know, how do you know there's a thin arrow? In, in the Cambrian, there's actually several very famous large shots um, that are referred to a lot. First is the British Jail here, which only began to do a bit more in this talk. Um, this was the Chingang in China, and Sir Success in Greenland. Both of these are actually older than the British Jail. There's something next. Uh, I think we found that actually told us it wasn't just the British Jail. The British Jail is the first one we knew about looking in, but older than that, some of these animals were around too. So it's everything in the picture. And that's when people started thinking British Jail fauna in a larger context, because they realized the animals existed. Um, here's a map of the world in Lake Cambrian, with half of the two continents working in Guam, and the bits of the of North America, the Baltic of Europe, North Europe, Siberia, and Russia. Um, British Jail is located here in the west coast of North America. Back then, in your actual position, I'm tracing the green man's eyes here, so set do not differ chromatically, just on the other side of that continent, and Jing Yang in China, as well, a tropical, uh, you know, a shallow water green environment. But these things have fairly similar environments, which is why they phrase in the fossils of like green man. Green man, the northern green man. Well, the time, yes, because it's a real mass test of North America. Everything North America was. Um, so here's what I have seen also as well, here's Halkaria, um, only saying that they're not quite sure what it is, <laughs> by an early mollusk of some kind. Um, I know Halkaria includes, includes the British Office and the Mongol very similar animals to that, some of our arthropods. Um, Jing Jing also has a, a fantastic preservation of variety fossils. Candaspis, um, you can see here's an arthropod that had carapace on it, and here's the legs from searching inside you. Um, this is an animal carapace, hopefully you can see it right here's the two claws at the front, um, now parts of the eyes, and the body coming up there. So what happens on the show? No, this is all Jing Jing. Yes, no, variety pod. As well as other very interesting animals. Um, the faunas of the species are not exactly the same, there's a lot of animals that each side. There's also some that are the same both So it gives us a better insight as to sort of the world culture of the pond. But of course, we're here for the Rishel. So I'm going to be mostly about that. Um, here's a basic map of some of the locations. Here we are in the field. Um, here's Mount Field, where all our most of you will be going up on Wednesday, I believe it was. Um, and there's also some other radium fossil sites along this escarpment where you can find some Rishel animals. Um, if you actually look up from the field to the other side, there's Mount Stephen, which also has some good soft body preservation. Um, some of the animals are actually not better over Mount Stephen, there's also famous Mount Stephen Charlie heads, which I'm not really sure. I think that's the three in this map we're going to that. But essentially, there's also a feature here with the Fugil Escarpment. I'll show you another 3D picture of that in a minute. So. Um, yeah, so you can see it on Here's a picture of the location. This is an old photo. So if you if you hiked up the past towards the British Jail directly from Beale, you'd end up on a bit around Sound Road here, and this is Mount Field right here. And here's Emerald Lake way on our body. It's also a view is not really different from uh, Emerald Lake. And if you look out on this, you can see this on the road up pretty day from visitor center. You might see a little white side or a gap in the rock, and that is a main walk-up quarry right there. It's important enough to collect snow by nicely, so when you get no shine features, there's a walk-up quarry. Here's a better close-up picture uh, with less snow, but here's a walk-up quarry right here. And there's also two other small quarries that haven't uh, used at times I've researched to try to find a round. And I have found a round. Although that's actually where we used to walk out where we base. So you can find a round on Pedro here as well. There. <laughs> <laughs> there's not much to see. <laughs> um, Basic history of the British Hill. The uh, site was discovered by Charles Udall Walcott. And he was an invertebrate paleontologist who made a profound theory in Amos. Um, of course, the British Hill didn't just be started so much as that he was in Childice and some of the other archaeologists found at the time. Um, but he wasn't just an invertebrate he was a go getter. Uh, he did all these things with the founder of the Carnegie Institution of National Academy of Sciences. He was director of USDS, um, secretary of the Smithsonian, and president of the American Association of the Master of Science. So, uh, it's not as nice easy goals these days, I think, once. Um, back then, he was, and he was then, as it were, the So he was a very good uh, researcher in my life. He found Corey in 1909 and worked it from 1910 to 1924. And here's a classic picture of 1915. Um, 
If you go there today, this side of the quarry doesn't look really different from this picture. Um, the other side of the quarry doesn't look too great to you. But so, a lot of people have sometimes known for being that this is good there. Okay. And I'm all popular, I'm on this bed. Take a picture, you know, look the same. And you'll see the same little clusters of materials over here as well. Um, Did it actually use the quarry? Yes. It is, well, this wasn't ever a mineral, a mineral quarry or a rock quarry. It was only ever a fossil quarry. So when I call it a quarry, it wasn't because sometimes it does take a while to find the best specimens. And uh, even in the past when I worked there, um, you go there with chisels, chisels and hammers, uh, pry bars, and a few gasoline powered devices up as well. And you sit down and you just come to your rock and play with this giant bottle of so that's, that's what they mean by quarry and color quarry. Although, you can see even from this picture how much of this is clear away from sort of more natural rock slope. There's going to be a huge amount of material on here from this slope. Um, actually, you can picture showing that this is in the 1990s. And, you know, a lot of this used to slow down more naturally. A lot of this has been removed to the huge edge right here. And in fact, since this picture's taken, a big square of this is down about 15 feet of a fruit quarry at the lower levels of this area. This is the big design. I think they'll be swapped out in the other people who use that. Although, generally, I'll be in the park, that's not okay. <laughs> and frankly, you know, that tends to destroy that material as well. Um, <laughs> It's a little bit you can't, you can't take anything on there. There are bits of development out here and there, but most of the things are okay. It's very hard to do about the like, possessors in the area, so they know people are going up there. And, uh, and they keep an eye on pretty closely. Um, I worked there in 2001. Um, so after all that, it's more by a number of people. It was clear both characters in 1981. And uh, as Holmes and Royal Interior seem after about a decade of uh, leaving, <laughs> like, by the end, he, he was working there in 1989 2001. Um, that was the last year it was sort of an active quarry. There's been small research ships trying to get this out it was basically decided, no, there's no fossils like this right now. Let's focus more on research those fossils. And uh, we really need something new and you can make a little bit here and there, but focus not so much on like, the fossils out there anymore. Let's focus on other aspects. So I was lucky enough to prepare the very last summer of Cory. Um, glad to take from that. Uh, the year of work starts in, uh, this is July. No. So this is my excellent start until I think in July, because in fact this is July 5th. No. Um, I don't want to go 4th of July, I'm going 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 to go 4th of July, the rocks, snow, everything just piles up in it. And if you wait, it's not before, you wait for it to melt naturally. Well, wait for it to melt out, it might have a week or so working though. Um, so, I went to the ice with shovels. Um, we got a lot of the snow. We also figured out quite a way of doing this by um, cutting out large blocks, right now, the base was in the knotting height, and just pushing down the slope. Um, if we saw Ram coming, we definitely did. <laughs> um, and then after that, start the job of actually getting the rock out. And the way that's been modern times, if you want to remove a section of rock today, is we use an actual something uh, very similar to a jackhammer, and drill a hole behind a large chunk of rock. Put wedges in that hole to break the holes apart and chisels and really plastic uh, going style, hard sledgehammer, back 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 back, just put the whole thing away so that you get um very cohesive blocks you can break off of this and then you can hammer and chisel and you just break that down bit as carefully as you can to try to get you get all the Um here's an example of after the piece working with guys with the bars. So the methods have not changed significantly since the old days. Um, and if you really want fossils on these the physical manual way best. Um here's examples of pictures of some of the guys cutting breaking open these pieces. So it's quite over. <laughs> and maybe when you clear out quick, I think we spent two weeks just shelling out some rocks. That was also sort of fun. Um, here's a picture again from the late 90s when they just started clearing out this area. Like I said, this is not I don't actually know what Steve is doing here. Um, he may be trying to, um, aim might be funny, he may actually slate this way a little, but he may also be trying to trim a piece down around the large set fossils. Um, to get these materials, I was always going to take a helicopter back to the valley. And so it was encouraged to try to get the pieces down as small as possible around the actual fossils. Um, it works okay because of the level of metamorphism these rocks are under all them. Sort of slate like they're not actually technically slate, but, um, it makes it easier to break them and it takes a fair pass to learn how to, you know, if they rock a fossil in the middle, then it's straight so they don't break the fossil in the middle. Yeah, normally these things seem this way. Yeah, yeah. This was something that was in the 90s group. Um, and here's a picture from 2005, uh, when we had a couple of high university out that day. That was a wonderful day in October, uh, coming out of the quarry. It's supposed to say when we were coming out. Uh, so that's me being a group of people. Um, this is a quarry in the fall, if you're lucky enough to live in the fall. You guys should not have it like this. I'll see if you can go over it. Well, you can talk about it a bit, you can't see as much, you know. Um, oh, the lockbox, the fossils now, there's a lot of kept in the lockbox up here, so you can't get out of having a hand Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> I've tried it. And so here's the cool thing, and here's that, so you can see what I'm talking about. This is that old bench here. So it's been working for a bit. <laughs> so it's basically all of you have a preservation here. Um, there are two major formations that we're going to worry about in the very first show. One is called cathedral formation, the other is the seed formation. This is a massive carbonate platform, okay? And it's thought that this existed in the past, sort of as a larger start into the ocean. So you come out in relatively shallow water here, and you come out and just foam it down to very deep water right there. And in this deeper water, the calmer water, so you've got the seed formation fossils, which are fine grains of this canyon fossils, which are there. Um, there aren't any new fossils in this one, Harrison. And here's the lot that you've shown where the details are located in the seam. Here's the construction of what it looked like in the here, right? So sort of large carbonate scarment here, as you can tell, there was a, a mutant mineral geology, where it was uh, even slightly older carbonate block where everything just kind of fell off the side, leaving a large undersea cliff. And basically, the animals of British Shale were being observed down here at the base of this. Um, the time of are located here, and in the current day, the start is not just a linear feature, a straight line on the map, it actually comes in boats. And um, it's kind of hard to vision this now, but when you look on the map, it's sort of a curvy line, and you try to find places in the uh, steam formation along this part of the lot. So there's fine grained rocks, the fossils get buried there, they may have a chemical difference uh, to help preserve them a little bit better uh, for a variety of reasons. So. Um, and here's like, this even on the very famous Castle Mountain um, as well, so there's a few other stuff on top. There's no longer, um, this is, there's a material here with the same age as the bridge show, so things are being possible on top here in the basin at the same time. Um, 
And for those of you that uh, are in certain states, you have, you have four different U.S. and this was like eight miles an hour for a brief period of time after the war, um, but people in the area didn't like that, so you can check out that one. I'm glad you had fun presentation. They're like, this is the tower on the left, and I think that's an hour. And you can come, and they're like, okay, you guys are. So still, as you said, it's still not an hour peak, and how we don't have all the mountain so here's a picture of the fine grain sediments in Walcott Quarry, and maybe the best fossils are from these nice dark fine layers. Um, some of the light layers are coarse green, and then I have to observe a detail of fossils that are in them. Um, there's also some sediment pieces for that. But basically, one of the great things for smothered shells is the fact that we're just hard rocks being honest with surface. You get all these amazing uh, things that can probably be like this. Yeah. Frankly, for the red shell, somebody would be on this and be like, oh, there's a shell base in the mud. Hey! <laughs> um, but now they can actually probably look like this, sort of in the calls, right? And I can be in a second. Um, so why are there fossils preserved here? And this, this was a, a source of a lot of convention for a long time. There's a lot of discussion over exactly what's going on. Um, some say that uh, off these curves there would be some mudslides and the excavation of the animals, they're rapid area. There's a great character before. Um, but there was a problem in this too, that there was a lot of evidence of burrowing down here. Um, and some people said many animals weren't living down here at all. There's no evidence of anything walking around or burrowing in the mud. Um, so maybe they lived on top of the earth and they washed down and got preserved there. And there's been a lot of arguments for this. Um, other people are saying it's just some chemistry that's probably special, so it helps preserve them. Um, and they talk about the preservation, I'm going to use some more efficient water to preserve there. So there's been some data that come up that are pretty good. Basically, you can deep fossils that are carbonized, and they're in carbonized sort of in more than just two dimensions. Um, you can actually deal off layers of the animals, sometimes there's no things underneath. Um, they're squished, but it's a detail of preservation that they're traveling off the shelf and find some legs underneath some things. This is something you do at home. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of uh, research graduate students spend many hours with a needle in my school, flaking off any of the uh, fossils to do this kind of thing. And here's an example of course, the, uh, the Silk Turns Converse Shelf Foundation, uh, Marana, uh, or a post fossil. Um, an animal that's also typically preserved with a big dark stain of squish coming out of it. I'm just not really sure what that dark stain of squish is, but I didn't think about it. They're not just with evidence of their doctor that they're skeleton. But <laughs> something from their insides is uh, on, screwed out of the rock. And the boy is one more thing, soft fossils as well. This is a preactive room, I'm sure you that bit. But here's the same it's got. Um, this is warm sort of space when it's a uh, proboscis there. Um, the preservation is considered quite special, but they even call it called bird shell type preservation. So you ever see that? That's referring to the type of preservation. It turns out nowadays it's actually fairly common in Cambridge. And in fact, some of the stuff in pre Cambridge, the Eat Akron Fauna, is also bird shell type preservation. Uh, and I'm just one study of Russian as well. Um, in this, the carbon has actually been changed to carbon. I'm wearing a less reactive carbon compound. So that's why you allow the one for the powder. You're not replacing all the carbon, it's all the minerals, fossilize it. It's just being changed to different forms of carbon. And also, clay minerals, soft, the smallest grains you have, do replace and coerce some soft tissue. So, you can things that preserve this detail. Um, type preservation now known from all water gaps. So, it's not just found in places like the shower at the bottom of the carbon. They've actually found some like preservation in shallow waters, places in the world, as well as in the basin. Um, and the actually found out that during chemistry, rocks generally oxygen is present. Um, so, he thought that maybe animals on top of the carbon would get washed down in the basin, there were no oxygen, so it was really easy to preserve them. Turned out there was oxygen in those sediments, but it's not very well done. They reduced the availability of microorganisms, which has got very fast and fine grain sediments. And these sediments seem to have a lot of fun. There's no air space in them, right? so you don't get very much oxygen. So, uh, for instance, animals are sort of laying for a mountain to keep the stuff like, buried. So they can't find the air down there to breathe. Um, in a few cases, they think that maybe this is a process. No. Um, I never heard that say. There are people who said maybe there's some water seep that releases compounds. They also help this along. And it's thought now that um, there are preservation sites where that definitely is not the case. And in places like the Virginia, we have into deeps, and that would simply further assist the lack of fun degradation. So, it's sort of a, all these things together kind of story. Um, one of the big things that's important for this is it creates what's called human substrate evolution. Um, we talked about, we first used to say the original response for this was explosion, a uh, more complicated multicellular life forms. Uh, as part of this explosion of animals, animals had to evolve and learn how to burrow down in sediments, sort of existing, it's called multi tiers of the substrate. Initially, animals just live on the surface, picked up a lot of columns, and And over time, animals became more complicated in their ecology, learning how to burrow down, and even give them different depths in the substrate. Mm -hmm. Some animals burrow down, you have meters, some of them have meters. So, the lack of animals sort of disturbing all the sediment, and training everything up, that is how you reimburse and allow them to start preservation out. That's why it tends to not exist after the Earth next year. Right. Right. Although it's it's something we're thinking right now, and this is uh, someone else's research, right? That it may have been um, something that's in the definition of humans that come in and stuff to play in them. They have walked down that way and they have more brass and more shit. Um, I can't really comment on that as much, but uh, it's not to make another like, more oxygen sort of unit in the way but basically, it's resulted in opaque, slippery organic film. And when you look at these fossils, you can't think about that, which I remember quite a lot of you say. Once you shouldn't touch them, because it is just carbon still on the surface, and it's very thin. And touching them all the time actually goes away, and nothing through. Um, but it also makes it really look bad, and you want to look at them in the right light, so then you move around with that flushing. It also makes it really hard to see them on rainy day. Um, the label's not good for that. The calcite mineral that John's going to talk about a lot is generally gone and replaced by the minerals in these things. And the really cool thing is a lot of soft body are absorbed in the muscles and replaced by phosphate. So it's not a simple one stage preservation process. This is a jet around the world in these sort of The geometry of rocks turns out it's fairly difficult in normal rainy conditions. Um, this is a look at the mountain. They might be also pieces of special cases as well. Trail chemistry, we know, is not that different from other rocks we find in the world. Um, so, as I said, it's some. Yes, so if there were seeds with other toxic animals present, they probably would help prevent the rowing and decay. Um, but not in the primary cause of bad things are here as well. Um, as well, there's another research that said, you know, that most of the decay has probably happened before burial. Um, as I said, it's by the way fossils look in the beds. As I mentioned, the standard course of beds don't preserve as well. I really find that it's a mud and silica in the best of the fossils. Um, yeah. And there are any reddish colors in preservation of the site. They're going to be higher in the pool school than oxidizing to sort of dust. 
Um, in terms of uh, in Xinjiang, it's always been a big deal. Like, you look at 